Welcome to day 360 of Shaped by the Word. We are coming to the end of uh, this season of Shaped by the Word. We're in the final chapters of the book of Revelation. Uh, we have uh, come through some of the darkest and hardest chapters. We see, you know, the vision of what is taking place, and it's, it's almost unbearable in our sight. On this end, we see uh, the glory of what has taken place. Babylon has fallen. God has taken down every structure that has uh, raised itself against him. Uh, and uh, the, the people of the world are mourning her loss. But we turn to a very different uh, scene in chapter 19 where the people of God uh, finally are liberated from the forces of this world and the evil forces around us. And, and you hear a great celebration. So before I before we read chapters nineteen and twenty, uh, let's uh, let's pause and um, realize what a beautiful you know what beautiful picture we're uh, seeing in the book of Revelation the horror of God's wrath but the grandeur of His salvation and the hope you know that lies before us and, and the call to patience and patient endurance. Mm. So Katie, you mind lifting us up? Mm. Father, thank you for this moment that you've given us um, to read your word together as your people. Thank you for um, just this year of being present with us, Lord, um, as we have been shaped by your word, as we've been growing together um, as your body. And um, thank you for your faithfulness and walking with us through that um, as we reach the end um, of an amazing year of just being in your word together. So I pray that you today you would continue to shape us and um, that we would learn more about who you are um, and be encouraged and find hope um, in, in the person of Jesus and um, in your power and all the ways that you've shown us your heart. That's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned a great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again, they shouted, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. And then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants, you who fear him, both great and small. And then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like the loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. And then the angel said to me, Write to us. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship, for God, worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a right horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on the white horse and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads on the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, come together uh, for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of the horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider and on the horse. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. 
The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until a thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sands of the seashores. They march across the breadth of the earth and surround the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They'll be tormented day and night, forever and ever. I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So we see the final you know, triumph of, of the Lamb, and we hear about the uh, first resurrection and the second resurrection, the first death and, and the second death. Uh, again, we, we look on this in awe. Uh, we are blown away by the grandeur and the mighty works of God, but also we're deeply saddened about the judgment of God and and those who have rebel, rebelled against him. I'm not, not so much saddened by the beast and by the devil and by the prophet, uh, but... Uh, by those who have been deceived and by them. So what are some of the things that are standing out? We learned from this that Jesus does indeed have a tattoo <laughs> on, on his thigh, King of Kings and, and Lord of Lords. Uh, this is a much different picture of, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, than the ones, you know, that we usually have on yeah. our you know, Sunday school walls. And yeah. uh, we see uh, we see him as, you know, the the lowly and gentle, the meek and the, and the mild. And, and, of course, he's described himself you know, to us, you know, that way in the Gospel of Matthew, but we also see him as a powerful ruler who, by his very words, uh, you know, slays, you know, slays the nations. Mm-hmm. It's interesting how the angel in um, 19 verse 9 um, says, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb, and he added, these are the true words of God, and then John attempts to worship him. And the angel stops him and said, don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Um, I, I love that moment. I think um, I'm sure that this angel had to have been amazingly, you know, I don't even know, I guess in John's eyes, worthy of some sort of worship or praise or whatever. It must have been pretty incredible but um i love that the that the angel points to to the lord and says don't worship me um not to take it too far and i, I hope i don't do that by saying this but i i would love for myself I always to like do it that. when you introduce a <laughs> statement well matt knows i usually <laughs> take it too far go, go ahead Katie. um i just i i want my life to be marked by that i want to c- continually say no 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 don't praise me, don't um, give any sort of credit to me, but to continually point to the Lord, you're going to make us... I, you know, I, I, there's so many that run through my mind, but I'm probably <laughs> going to show a little bit of restraint uh, in godliness, you know, at this point. Uh, but obviously, you know, what is happening here is 
uh, you know, we were introduced, you know, to, you know, the deeds of God and, you know, chapter 15 is great and marvelous deeds. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're introduced into the presence of God and these four living creatures and, uh, you know, the throne of God and all of this, you know, has been, you know, from the time of the garden completely unaccessible to us. Mm -hmm. And there is no one who can go into the presence of God and even Moses, when he says, I need a vision of who you are in order to lead your people. He said, uh, I can show you my back, but your, my face you cannot see. Mm -hmm. And so when John is in the presence of all of this glory, the angel is obviously the most glorious thing that he has, he has ever seen, and he's blown away by that. But beyond the angel is, is one far more glorious mm -hmm. you know, than he is. And, and again, we, you know, we, we have so reduced you know, God uh, to our common experience. Yeah. And, you know, kind of the chummy expressions that we have that we forget his majesty and his grandeur. And mm -hmm. so if, if, if one would be caused to fall down and worship just in his surroundings, how much more would one, you know, fall down and worship in, in his very presence? Uh, you know, whom Paul says, lives in unapproachable light no one has seen nor can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, of course, we're getting to the place in these next few chapters where we – We'll see. Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the things that Revelation's done so well for us is just remind us of, of the orderly and and yeah, you know, outspoken loud worship that's already taking place in heaven. Right. That, that every time, almost every time we see a throne or we see like an angel show up or say something, it's followed by like this long refrain of you know. Then I heard this multitude and mm -hmm. you know like rushing waters or whatever you know he whatever image he wants to use. But he, it, you know here it is the people of God, you know the angels and they're shouting hallelujah salvation no. belongs. Um, and again, I don't know if you've ever been in a large you know convention center where you know people stand up and, and sing the praise. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. You know what you hear. Uh, you know, from the voices, and, and of course, this is all of creation and everyone who's been named, and, and so you have this you know, thunderous sound, you know, of, you know, gorgeous praise. And uh, you know, a couple of chapters earlier, we were given harps, even those of us who've never, you know, uh, never received any instruction on the harp, and even some of us who have received instruction on the harp, and it really sounds stupid when we play. There's a marvelous gift of the completion of our creation and our ability to offer him this grand praise. And so nothing we've seen, nothing we've heard, nothing we even begins to you know, prepare us you know, for the grandeur of this moment. We can compare it to lighter human experiences that we've had that have blown us away. And of course, going into the entrance you know, of God's presence will blow us away, seeing God himself mm -hmm. um, will more than undo us. Yeah. It's probably worth pointing out here you know, this chapter 20 uh when we get to like the millennium and and what does that mean yeah, it's one of the uh, this verse right here has probably caused more headache for interpreters than any other verse you know what is the millennium and what are the thousand years yeah. uh, mm -hmm. when we talk about the millennium the thousand uh, year reign of christ when satan is bound uh no longer deceives the nations and then will be you know released you know in the end and we talk about the first resurrection the second resurrection and those who will reign with christ and so we have approximately you know one minute and 30 seconds so why don't you clear the whole thing up for us matthew yeah <laughs> i'll clear the whole thing up. Here, here's what i think john does and, I think and, and you can't stutter you have to really dive yeah, in and clear I think it this up is what yeah. is helpful for us that you know john when he writes this is writing for giving us this vision saying you know jesus is is victorious and in the end he wins he triumphs and his people triumph with him and it's a message of hope and, and it reveals to us, you know, who God is, not so much about how all of these details are going to unfold exactly. You know, sometimes we can kind of, if I could just get the puzzle right, then I'll, you know, figure it out. But, um, you know, some of the positions, you have like a premillennial perspective, which says Christ will come back physically and he'll reign on the earth for a thousand years. And that's how, you know, that kind of return of Jesus will mark a thousand in, in years. And those who were martyred during this time yeah, will, we'll, will reign yeah, with him. There's the first resurrection. Uh -huh. um, the postmillennial perspective perspective will say no you know there's going to be a thousand year reign where the church um, will will really flourish and, and things will get better you know and then christ will return um, and then you've got the all millennial and, and, and of course you know paul has told us in the latter days things will go from from bad to worse, worse yeah. and uh, that also seems to resonate more with our experience you know in the early 1900s there there, there yep. was kind of a golden era 
of you know the the, the growth of Christianity hospitals and universities and you know the, those kinds of things and, then, and there was a lot of positive hope, but uh, that really didn't fit with scripture yeah. or our experience. Yeah, you know that. Uh, yep, and then the all millennial position is no millennium. You know that there there is not a literal thousand year reign, but right now Christ is reigning and we are in in the millennium in a sense, if you want right. to use that word, but. Um, it's worth noting too that all three of those positions are in the bounds of orthodoxy and we may see you know but me personally I would lean towards all millennial or at times pre-millennial not so much post so you're just kind of wavering right here I right just now kind of waver yeah. back yeah. Between I those can feel two, you going post you know, I can feel you just kind of edging quietly yeah, over my the cards post. are I'm, I'm in the all millennial <laughs> side but <laughs> then I read a pre-millennial and I'm like oh, gosh yep, there I am and then I read all millennial and I'm back so um yeah, but but it's worth noting that I you see people at times they mark you know orthodoxy around what you do with this and we would look at not only church history you know but but just looking at the text realize its difficulties and and you know it's not it's not a matter of orthodoxy if you get this passage right mm. um, you can definitely get it wrong but. no <laughs> it, and, and it's you know and of course the images you have here go back to creation where we were created to rule you know creation with god and here you know it's ruling with christ and mm. i you know i love the image of you know first and you know second resurrection uh you know the uh, there's a lot of ways you know to think about the first resurrection of course the first resurrection was uh the resurrection of christ well well out of time everyone expected resurrection at the end of time but in the middle of time you know jesus is ri- you know, ri- raised and, and, and vindicated and, and of course, we share with him as the first fruits of his in a resurrection. And so, you know, coming from a you know from a more idealist you know point of view, uh, you know that what a beautiful image we have shared with him in the first part of his resurrection. We also share with him in the second part of his resurrection. And the newness of life we have has redeemed us to be what we were originally created to be, a people reflecting God's heart and image and the agents of his rule and his reign on earth uh, for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you for the victory we have in Christ. We thank you that we are people of the resurrection who will not be touched by the second death. There are so many things that can happen to us in this world and so many ways that uh, the world can collapse on us and there's so many tragedies we can experience and so many different things you know that, that can overtake us even as the people of god but our ultimate destiny is sure in you and the hope that you have given us we thank you that you reign you know as king of kings and lord of lords and you have slayed uh, the world by the power of your word and you have redeemed us by the very same power And our hope is in you. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.